Hi, this is Isabel Litzler, the place to be to develop your skills and grow your potential. So today I wanted to make a video for uh, people who are still debating what they want to do as far as college education. I spoke with some young people a couple of days ago and I realized that there's still a big need for guidance and orientation. So I wanted to make a quick video to give you three tips on how to choose your college education appropriately. So the first thing you want to do, especially if you're looking for a Swiss career, is to look at job boards. If you want to see what is going to be uh, a place where you can get some recruitment afterwards, is to see what the market is hiring. So it's a little bit out of sense to do college education where there's not going to be a lot of job openings to apply for after you graduate. And especially the more general those, uh, it, this education is going to be, the, the harder it will be to put it into an actual concrete skill that you can uh, get a job with. So for example, an accountant, a certified accountant, it's very clear to understand what they can do. So you, know, you have jobs that are going to be linked with certified accountants and it's easy to identify those jobs. Now, if I get an arts degree, philosophy degree, a social science degree, what does this equate to in terms of skill and job? It's very hard. It's a little bit fluffy. So you can, you can argue, yeah, you're great at writing or, you know, you, you can argue maybe a case because you do a lot of uh, writing again and building cases and so forth. But then again, thinking about the jobs where there's needs right now, which are mostly in IT and tech and so forth, you know, those things may not be what leads you to an immediate job or you would have to maybe use this and then get something a little bit more concrete afterwards to be able to get a job, which makes it a little bit longer and complicated. So to avoid all this transition, the, hard, the easiest thing would be, okay, what are some of the jobs that are actually uh, wanted, you know, and see what kind of education you could plug in to have access to those jobs. So it's a little bit counterintuitive to maybe what you were told, like do what you love or what do you love to do. Well, the market being what it is right now and what's, what's going on and et cetera, a lot of jobs are going to be impacted with the changes and digitalization. You don't want to look at just what you love because let's say I'm uh, someone who loves food and making food and, and I want to open a restaurant. Well, you know, this is actually complicated in this time right now to open a restaurant. So, you know, it's not necessarily a good idea or you know, you're a singer or you're an actor or something like this, same thing at the moment, there's not a huge amount of activity in this field. And uh, there, it, it's just people really need to have their break to make it and, and make money out of these fields. So the complexity that you will have or the, the difficulties that you will have to enter into these sectors will be extremely uh, challenging. And only a few people really have the, the stamina, the personality, uh, the resilience factor, the talent to really make it into those fields. So the question is, you know, would I be able to, to do all this knowing that there's only a very small percentage chance that I make it? And again, this video is not to um, demotivate people to follow what they love. The point is more to say, okay, what is hiring? What kind of degree could I do that's a very concrete degree that I can get a job immediately? And then you can still do the things that you love on the side. So, you know, if you have a job that's full time, you still have your weekends, you still have your evenings, you can easily do art, you can easily do singing or acting or whatever it is that you love on the side. So this is really what I would recommend if you are right now wondering, you know, what kind of degree I should do. Look at the market. So I will put the job boards below, especially for English speakers in Switzerland. So there's uh, jobs in Zurich and in Geneva, see what are the fields where there's a lot of jobs, where, where it's going. And based on that, you can say, hmm, you know, I see that Switzerland is really about insurance, about pharma, about uh, not-for-profit, etc. And I want to work in Switzerland, therefore, you know, I should focus on these degrees. Now, it doesn't mean you have to get the degree in Switzerland. It just means you have to prepare yourself for the Swiss market. So, study something that's going to be in demand. And again, I talk about this in many videos, the jobs in demand, IT, tech, digital, all these things are really uh, wanted at the moment. And then there's other sectors that are not necessarily online, but you know, you just have to look at the world that you live in today, what's needed, you know, medical field, pharma, uh, you know, taking care of the elderly, all these things. So these are the growing fields, food, 
shelter, you know, I just say go with something basic. If you don't know what you want to do later in your life, choose what people need to absolutely have. And what do people absolutely need to have? Food, shelter, medicine. Those are the basics. So if you study to be a doctor or to be uh, or to work in the food industry or or real estate, you know, those things, there will always be some needs. So you can't go wrong with those fields. You know, I tell people if you're hesitant and you don't know what you want to do, but you're not highly technical type of person, go with the basic needs of humanity because that's never going to change. Now, when you start going into the more fluffy, nice to have things like luxury or art and all these things, you know, it's, it's questionable. You know, those things will go up and down. When the market is great, people have money to spend on the nice to haves. When the market is a little bit sluggish, then there's going to be, you know, I'm thinking also about travel, about, yeah, luxury travel, all these things. These are the nice to have. So when the market is not going doing well, there's going to be a, a sluggish period and you can't find a job. So that's why I would discourage people to go with what they love because what you love may not be what's needed. So go with what's needed. Look at the job board, study a little bit the Swiss market. I've put a lot of job boards everywhere in my uh, channel. So you can easily do research based on what I have uh, listed there and spend some time to really assess what are some of the job openings and job descriptions that are really wanted, the skills that are really wanted in Switzerland. And that's going to give you a good base for choosing a degree that is going to be a viable, a workable degree later on. And again, it doesn't have to be in Switzerland, but it prepares you for the Swiss market or for any other market for that matter. Um, if you want to work in the US or somewhere else, you know, same thing, look at what's recruiting. So that's how you choose a degree. You look at, you study, you research the market. That's number one. Number two is you want to look at salaries because again, this is something that's going to be important. If you study something that's uh, maybe in demand, but there's not a lot of salary there, probably you're going to be discouraged or you're going to want to change careers. And as we know, it's harder to change careers once you start. So uh, you want to basically look at all these things ahead of time rather than after the fact. So it's not after four years of education when you realize, oops, I don't like this at all. And the hours are not convenient for me and the salary is horrible. You know, you want to look at those things early on and with a high paying field, it's always, I think, better, especially when you're young, because this way you can, uh, you know, live. I was telling someone, you know, you live for 20 years working, making good money. And then by the time you hit 40 or 45, you can just do something else that's maybe less money making and more what you love. But uh, you don't have this stress. You know, you already made a lot of money and you invested, etc. So really the first 20 years of your life is where you should be going for the high paying job. And I didn't know this when I was younger, by the way. So I'm making this video now uh, based on my experience, but I didn't know all this. No one told me when I was in my 20s. So I went with what I liked and, you know, based on what I saw as uh, options, etc. So I had no guidance whatsoever. But now this is what I'm trying to do with this video is to give you the knowledge that I have learned. So what you want to do is really pick a degree that's going to be uh, wanted, that's going to be in high demand. And number two is you want to pick a degree that's high paying. Why high paying? Because again, you can be free, so to say, or you can, do, um, more, you can be more flexible with your life when you get to your 40s. If you've picked the right degree and you made enough money, then you have to work less. It's basic, I would say, logic. You know, if you make a lot of money for 20 years and you invest this money, then for the last 20 or 30 years that you would have to work, you can almost do an early retirement. So you may have to do things that, uh, you know, do a job that may not be so exciting for you, but you know it's going to pay you very much and you can invest this money and then you know that you have your hobby that maybe you can take to the next stage in your 40s uh, and you have money to do this because let's face it, whatever your passion or hobby is, you know, you will need money to make it happen. I mean, if you're a singer, you will need to invest in some equipment. You will need to do some production of your music, etc. You need money to make your dream come true. So uh, pick something that's the money making machine that you can um, basically have an income that covers the bills, that covers your, your rent, that helps you pay for the things for your hobby. Because again, every hobby 
is money. Uh, painter, same thing. You need to buy your uh, your colors and your uh, pencils and all that stuff. So uh, you need a a basic income that's going to provide for you. That's going to be an easy way to make some money. So. And again, I just said in the first part of this video what you can do where there are sure things or almost sure things that you can rely on that people will always need and where you can basically live off of. So, uh, you know, if you're a certified accountant, for example, and again, I'm not saying people should be accountants. Sometimes people take my examples and they say, OK, I'm going to do this. Let's be an accountant. This is just an example. There's many more uh fields that you can pick i just think about accounting because that's what goes, goes through my head but there's many more positions but let's say you're a certified accountant you don't have to oversell yourself you know people know what it is that you can do you apply you get the job and you have a, a regular income but again you need to be good at it so you need to invest yourself in it you know focus on it try to do a good job etc it's not just about the money. It's also about being good at what you do. So you need to mix the two. That's why you can't just pick anything that makes money. You have to pick something that is in demand where you can get a good salary, but you also do a good job at. So that's why it takes a bit of time. You know, don't rush this decision. You need to test also a few things. So number three is test, test, test. So if you say, I'm going to be a doctor, you know, have you watched a doctor work? You know, go to your local office, you know, and ask if you can follow the doctor around during one day. I'm sure that, you know, it's possible uh, to understand a little bit more what the job entails. I think a lot of people go to school for a profession and they realize that it's not right for them. So every profession has the pluses and minuses. So you want to do a little bit of what I call shadowing. So try to do this as much as you can in your home country. If you like medical, you know, try to follow some doctors or ask to ask some questions. You know, I'm sure that you could do this, you know, ask a doctor, can I interview you? Find out what your day's like, what is your job about, etc. Before you invest into a medical degree, if you want to be an accountant, you know, go to your local accountant. Same thing in your city. Uh, what is your job about? What kind of work do you do? Can you show me, etc. What are your days like? Uh, what are the pluses and minuses of your job? So interview a few people in the field that you're considering before you invest in it. And maybe you realize after doing this that it's not really what you love and it's not really what you want to work in. Even though it pays well and there's a demand, you need to find that sweet spot where you have those things, but you also can see yourself working in it. So it's, it's a sweet spot that you have to find and you may not find it immediately. You may need to Spend some time, think about it, ask some people, uh, you know, before you commit to something and you say, I'm going to do this degree. Because again, I see a lot of people do a degree and they realize they don't like it. They do a second degree, a third degree. And then by the time you're 30, 34, you've never really worked a real job. You have a lot of internships, you're moving around and you haven't really earned any income. So the consequence of this is that you start your career at 35 and then you're going to have to work until 70 if you want to survive. So it's a little bit, I think, um, not so exciting. So what I would really recommend is do the heavy lifting when you're young, because that's when you have the energy, you're young, you're motivated. Uh, that's when you want to put in the hours. That's when you want to start making the big income. And also knowing that companies tend to hire uh, young people easier than when you hit your 50s. So you're going to be more marketable when you're young. You're going to have the stamina and the energy to work long hours and, uh, and be a, an employee that's providing for the company. So you're going to be paid well at that age in your 20s and 30s. So you want to maximize that part of your life between 20 to 40 to do everything. That's really the time when you should be 100% career-wise. Uh, you know, just, you know, make the money, do the work, uh, pick something where you can be very good at. And then after your 40s, you can do other things and you can be a bit more relaxed and you don't have to struggle so much to sell yourself, which is much more complicated in your 40s. But this is why I recommend that you pick the right degree so that you don't have to spend 10 years floating around in different fields to realize that, you know, you haven't really worked a real job yet and you're heading 35. So, uh, and I see a lot of people in that situation, you know, they did a degree, it wasn't really working for them. They did another degree, they did a PhD, and then they realize that at 35, they're still not really working. 
can you imagine at 35 you haven't really earned a living so that means you have debt probably you you know you don't really own anything so you're gonna have to work really late to cover for this so um so again the main again the the three things to remember from this video is number one research 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 the job market first before you invest in a degree look at the job boards that i provide uh, to see what is hiring and again for this channel it's really Switzerland but feel free to look at other cities as well number two is you know look at uh, separate hobbies from uh, real jobs look at you know what are some of the jobs where it's always going to be in demand no matter what and you can find something that's high paying as well very important so high paying high demand that's the good and find the sweet spot where you're also happy doing it you're content with it and uh, number three is really try to uh, follow people, you know, ask questions, uh, go to their offices, um, do your interviews basically and do your people research, you know, with professionals that are doing the job. So doctors, lawyers, uh, accountants, you know, go and talk to them, see what it is that they're doing. You will probably save yourself three or four years of college by just, you know, doing this research with professionals and really, really checking that it is what you want to do. And trust me, I've had many clients after doing this part of their skills assessment that they realize it's just not the right path for them. So again, you want to save yourself a lot of uh, unnecessary time spent at school and, uh, and go for something that you know is the right path for you. So spend more time before going to school, even if it means that you're going to take a year off to think about it. You know, I would prefer that you take a year off and say, OK, I don't know what I want to do. So I'm just going to ask people, do interviews, maybe travel or, you know, stay around and uh, do a little bit of research for a year on my computer and uh, think, you know, do some soul search, etc. You know, let things come to you. You know, you don't want to go and sign up for the first college degree just to fill time. Uh, this is not a good idea because after you do this, you probably realize it wasn't the right choice. So take the time to make the right choice. Uh, and then it's also better for the school because they have people that are motivated, that are doing the right uh, education, and therefore they will have better results in terms of graduation and success and placement afterwards. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you have some questions, as usual, feel free to post below. Feel free to send me your questions so I can make a Q&A type of video. This is also great because it's actually covering the type of needs that the community has in terms of jobs in Switzerland and career, etc. So feel free to post below. I'll talk to you soon.